Hi, welcome to Cornerstone Virtual Sunday for December 20, 2020. I'm Mike Gillen, pastor of Cornerstone United Methodist Church. To those of you who are new to Cornerstone, welcome and thanks for joining us. Please contact us at our website, cornerstoneofallon.org, clicking on the Contact Us tab, then filling out the Connect card. To all of you who have Facebook pages, please take a minute and click the Share button on our virtual service to share it with your friends. Once you've done that, then click Share Now. Our scripture for today will be Luke 1, verses 46 through 55. I'll be using the New International Version of the Bible. Take a moment and find that scripture so we can read it together. Jesus promises you and me in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Through the Holy Spirit, we are literally being brought together by this virtual technology. So let's welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives. Let's worship together on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Find in these moments a place of sanctuary where God creates for you an experience of sacred space and time with other people of God. Join me in worship as we enter into a time of prayer. Pray with me. God, today, you bring us to you, even as you enter our lives, seeking for us to receive your grace, reminding us of the most basic messages of good news that are brought to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Today, God, help us to receive your love and remind us that we are created essentially to being vessels of love for others. In Christ's name, amen. May you find in this time a, a great opportunity to experience God's grace and to be prepared for the celebration of Christmas that is just around the corner. Let's continue worshiping with our affirmation of faith. We find in the Apostles' Creed a statement of faith that binds you and me together with Christ's followers throughout history and all around the world. Join me in being bound together with one another through our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May your faith be blessed as you're reminded of the people who came before you and those all around you who are also part of this faith. Our scripture for this worship service is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Hear these words of life meant for you and me today. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. God has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. God has blessed his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and to his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That scripture, by the way, is often called Mary's song. It's a way for us to remember how Mary felt as she recognized who she was giving birth to, the the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So this is the fourth Sunday in Advent, the four weeks prior to Christmas, meant to prepare us for the celebration of Christ's birth and lead us to anticipate Christ's promised return for each one of us one day. I found Advent to be a helpful way for me to be more prepared, to get ready for Christmas, to help me see and hear and feel what the spirit of Christmas is meant to be about. And Advent has helped me to define what I think is most basic to the experience of having faith in Jesus Christ. I really understand Advent to be something like basic training or training camp for Christians. The season explains what, should, what it should feel like to experience faith in Jesus Christ. And Advent defines what others will see in you and me as Christ takes hold of our hearts. This Advent message series is titled, Hearts for God. My aim is to explain week by week what you should recognize happening to you when you turn your heart over to God, not just during the Christmas season, but literally every day of your life. God is working to change our hearts. The evidence of this change is the growing hope, peace, joy, and love inspired by watchfully living for Christ's return. Every week, we've considered what happens to us when we let God take more control of our hearts and allow God's Spirit to turn our eyes toward the promise of Christ's return for us. This is the intention of both Christian faith and the season of Advent. What happens when we let God into our hearts? Our hearts are changed, and that changes what we live for and what we expect. In the first message in this series, I talked about hope, a belief in the invisible God who promises life beyond this life, yet leads us to see past the hurts of our past in order to discover a life of purpose and service. The second message in this series focuses on peace, opening our Hearts to God allows grace to fill us with a peace that reflects Christ's way and the Holy Spirit's presence. Letting God into your heart more and more allows the hope found in Christ to fill you in a way that leads your thoughts, actions, and words to be more peaceful. The third Advent message focuses on joy. God promises to transform our lives and world, bringing joy into our hearts as we depend on Christ more and more. Hope, peace, and joy. Three basic attributes of a maturing Christian heart. The fourth theme of Advent is love. The promise of Christ reveals God's love for us. Our hearts are made to receive and be filled by God's love. I love giving good gifts, especially at Christmas time. I don't know about you, but I think it's great to give a gift that someone holds onto for years. I like giving the best gift of the day because it gives them a sense of joy and it reminds them of how much I love them. Don't you do that too? Do you like being the best gift giver in the family or do you prefer to receive the best gifts? By the way, what was the Blues um, Stanley Cup win? Was that a gift given or a gift received? I don't know, but it was a joyful time, wasn't it? I forgot about that last week in the joy message. In either case, this is the season for gift giving and receiving. We prepare for Christmas by getting gifts, wrapping them, and waiting for the appointed time to give our gifts and receive gifts from others. Anticipation of Christ's birth is that ultimate gift from God to the world that sets off an endless chain of events, gift giving and receiving that reflects God's grace. Luke's gospel recalls the song Mary held in her heart as she anticipated God's son being born to her. She would sing for us all a song of redemption and long made promises finally being fulfilled. She says, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Mary then tells that God has placed within her heart the best of gifts. And as she prepares for his birth, she sees the conclusion of the long-awaited uh, generational long gift promise, the gift of the anointed one. 
Mary's song foretells of the work of Christ and what that work will do in this world, a work of love made incarnate in order to bring a lasting salvation to all people. God wants that gift of love to be made real in your heart this Advent. God wants you to open your heart to the love of Christ. That love will restore the damaged fidelities the, and it will heal the weakened confidences that are within you. Your faith in God may be made whole, your, your belief in yourself can be redeemed, and your integrity before others can retain an honor as you make preparations for the eternal gift of love offered to you through the Christ child. I think a lot about Christian faith and the, and the way we live. I think about it all the time. I wonder what the main goals of life are for myself and, and for others. What are the main goals in your life? In what ways do you want to be a person who gives and receives good gifts? And how is that connected to what your faith is meaning to be for you? I think a growing sincere faith in Jesus Christ necessarily needs to be connected to a desire to receive God's love in one's heart. That love from God then results in a heart seeking to give good gifts of grace to others. This is the eternal heart of a servant of God. What do you think Christian faith should do for you? What should faith in Christ lead you to do? I knew a man who was a hardworking, imperfect, family-oriented, standoffish guy, unsure of how to let Christianity into his life, but still following Christ in some way. You know the type I'm talking about? This guy didn't have a lot of use for going to church and sitting in a worship service. He was more of a do-something kind of guy. You know what I mean, right? Other Christians looked at him and wondered, is that guy saved? You know how some Christians can be, right? There are a lot of us who think about, think being a Christian is like working on a used car lot. You know what I mean? Like anyone who walks past us is either a used car salesman like us, or we need to sell them. Always be closing. That's how some see Christianity, I think. Anyway, this guy I knew was a guy who became a Christian early in his life, uh, grew, grew up in the church, but he wondered, uh, you know, what was it supposed to be like to be a Christian all the time? Uh, he didn't just really see Christian faith as something that he prayed about once and it happened to him. He understood that he wasn't perfect. His thoughts weren't always the best. Uh, he lost his temper a lot. He wasn't much of a church goer. He didn't really read the Bible a lot, and so he had some doubts about how sincere his faith was. But he always found a way to offer love to others. He understood love was a way of giving good gifts to other people. So he gave to charity all the time, and I mean all kinds of charities. He offered his life as a way of devoting himself to others, even though most people didn't see all those acts of charity he did. And he also loved God. He tried to serve other people, and he really tried to love his family. God worked in him in a way that helped him to understand love was a lifetime responsibility and activity. And so he worked hard to grow as a person and to give other people love. Love is really meant to be an eternal gift. It both helps us to receive the birth of Christ and to see how we're given gifts by God all the time. Today, God is inviting you to turn your heart over to God to be transformed and renewed in your heart by love. Love is the fourth theme in this season of Advent. God is offering you love today, leading you to live a life of love, not just talk about it, encouraging you to see in prayer, in daily reflection on the Bible, and in serving others that this is how your heart becomes more a part of God's love day by day. God wishes to bless your heart as you willingly let Christ's love into you. God's leading us forward in faith every day. We're created to serve God, follow Christ, and live in the Holy Spirit. Each day is an opportunity to take a step forward in faith, to live better by faith, and to grow in love toward God and others. Understand that prayer leads us to live better by faith daily. Prayer is our lifeline to God, giving clarity to what God wants for us and explaining how the Bible's teachings can become part of our life each day. As we enter a time of prayer together, Talk with God about the next steps of faith God wants you to take, especially those steps that lead your heart to become more loving toward God, 
and toward others. Understand that prayer is not just meant to be about your own needs, but also about the needs of others. So consider how even the act of prayer is an activity of loving service to others. So let's take a moment and pray together. Join me. Our God, we approach you with humble hearts, needing your grace, understanding you're offering us eternal love. Prepare our hearts for the celebration of Christmas, which is just around the corner. But remind us that at the very center of what it means to be a follower of Christ is the ongoing work of your spirit to transform us into people of hope, peace, joy, and love. Today, allow our hearts to be filled with your love and remind us that we are meant to live in love toward you and others each day. Daily, God, work in us and transform us to be your people. Now, God, remind us of what it means to be your people. Teach us to pray as we remember your son's prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's been great to be with you for this Cornerstone Virtual Sunday, the, the fourth week of Advent. I hope you've been inspired to search for God this week, understanding that God is calling to you every day, seeking to inspire you to a life of love. Be safe this week and take care of one another. As we conclude our time together, allow me to offer you a blessing. As we leave this time, the grace of God and the light of Christ go before us. Let God's voice and God's spirit fill you with grace, the grace you'll need to reflect Christ in what you think, say, and do. Be blessed and be a blessing to a world that desperately needs God's hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen.